both in our web site, Unique Visitors. Now just remember, this isn't total visits to the site. You can pretty much add another, at least another third of visitors on for total visitors to the site. But in terms of Unique Visitors, you can see here, we've had some very good growth. And just to explain, there's a couple of big spikes here. This first spike occurred through our Grab It campaign and the joint venture we did with Air New Zealand uh, through their Grab A Seat website. Uh, I can also show you here in January, this is uh, some very po positive uh, growth here in the website as well. Again, we were in market during January promoting this front summer campaign and uh, pushing TV advertising as well. So, so I'm, I'm really pleased with the results we've got from that grab. We were a little ambitious in, in our target. This is 25,000 unique uh, visitors per month. And so we're probably going to, uh, the idea is to stick with that target again this year. Uh, so in terms of the, the difference between this year, last year and this year, I think uh, we're very pleased with the way that the website and our online activity is tracking. We have invested heavily in uh, bringing in another staff member that's full time working on digital media. The result of that has meant that our social media engagement with our customers is, is a, a lot stronger. We've got 3,000 members on Facebook and that's growing, and, and the same with our, our Twitter account as well. So I'll leave it there and then hand over to Paul unless you want me to answer some questions. Okay, well, that'd, be, uh, that'd be good. Just before you do hand over to Mr. Winter or Paul. Um, Councillors, have any questions or anything of Mr. Peter? <coughs> Can we get the uh, results from the 40 Lake Taupo businesses to see which ones are benefiting more than others? You know, uh, if, if you covered a wide range, it would be interesting, wouldn't it, to see where where we are losing and where we are gaining? Yeah, what we can, what we have to do is be a bit careful about the data we release <coughs> because of the, the commercial sensitivity. sensitivity yeah. What we're doing is grouping that data into key sectors. Mm. So uh, for commercial accommodation, for example, we'll, we'll lump those categories mm. under hotels and mm. holiday parks, motels, mm. etc. So we can't drill down the individual businesses for you, but we can let you know whether that sector is performing well or not. So can we ask the 40 businesses, do they cover, what, what do they cover? I mean, you've just said yeah. retail, accommodation, what else? Uh, they cover uh, hospitality. Mm. Uh, they cover transport mm. and uh, and attractions. So okay. The, yeah, attractions yeah. is more of the, the fixed activities mm. like the hooker prawn park mm. yeah, and some of those other Skydiving, yeah, yeah, yeah. Skydiving is more is, is considered an activity. activity yeah, yeah. So yeah. Mm. Okay, because they'd be good indicators, weren't they, other than these ones that are unreliable because these would be constant, weren't they? Yeah. Well, it, I think the thing that I like about them is that we can get them on a monthly basis. So mm. pretty much two weeks after the month is finished, we can get that data. Whereas with the, the, the CAM, we're waiting for at least two months. Mm. And the other thing I think is it, it, going to be useful for us is to compare any compare our traditional data with what's happening in the industry. Yeah. And you know, Rotorua does this for just act, uh, activities, and we've wanted to do it for across all of the different sectors in the business mm. industry. Good move, good move, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, just Scott, just back with your, your name change on Explore Central North Island. Central Park, I mean, w it was quite a big push for that cha name change when Rotorua Airport um, opened up into yes. Australasia. What's happened to that? I notice that's not underneath that Explore Central North Island. Yeah. No, that's a really good question, actually. I think Central Park did get off to a, you know, to a bit of a hiss and a roar, and uh, our view was that if all of the seven uh, Central North Island regions uh, went into it boots and all and, and stayed with it for three or four years, then we'd have the potential to create a strong brand in Australia. Unfortunately, because the the branding was developed by Rotorua Airport, they didn't perceive some of the issues with the coastal uh, regions. And what we found was after a year of uh, kept pushing the, that particular branding, we, we had those partners pull out. Uh, since that time, we've looked at Central Park as no longer being a, a key brand message in Australia. We're just using it as what you could call a what we call in the in the, the business a, a conversion uh, channel. So what the idea here is, we're pushing niche activities like mountain biking, cycling, uh, sorry, uh, mountain biking, fishing, walking, golf, those sorts of activities, and. Uh, 
Rotorua Airport is still investing a, a, a full-time marketer to assist us with that. And for example, we just did a, a another version of the uh, mountain bike video, that very successful. Mm. First one, be rude not to, and then another one, mad if you don't, we've just mm. filmed that. So that's got a really good following with the Australian mountain bikers. Uh, it's, and as I say, we're really pleased with the results. We've just had them out at Kawakawa Bay. Uh, they had a beautiful day and had a great time. So. Those are the sorts of initiatives that we can target groups in Australia, and the same, we're taking the same approach with our uh, media work in Australia as well. Yeah. And just one other thing, sorry, Mr. Chairman, just with your um, <clears throat> grab at your, t your campaign, so I noticed that you've you've gone back a year and and you know you're up 45 percent and and 50 percent. Does have you taken into account like the recession, like 2009, 2010, probably the two hardest years with re recession in most parts of the country? Has yeah. have you kind of looked back further and you know taken into that account, or we certainly have considered it, but I think you know, in its simplest terms, the big change for us is that we're no longer performing well below other RTOs. We're now above the national average uh, in terms of our website traffic. We were placed, I think, around the, the 12th in the, the country, uh, which was less than the size of our RTO. Uh, we're now tracking at about 7th, and we're probably even higher in terms of social media and, and those sort of new areas. So what's the feedback from the local operators? I know a year ago there was there was quite a big complaint that a lot of money was being spent on websites and, and stuff like that and not on the local campaign, and obviously, you know, the grab it, grab it and yeah, summer campaign of on up there for not too much of a cost. What's the feedback from local operators in that at the moment? I think the operators now, the ones that I've, I've spoken to, are, you know, the majority are, are happy because they've now seen us return to being one of their key referring websites, uh, whereas in the past I, I don't think we were tracking at that performance. It, it's like a lot of things that the organisation's had to do over the last two and a half years. Uh, there's been a painful period where we've had to, to get slower to go faster had to stop, slow down, look at what we're doing in terms of branding, uh, look at what we're doing with our website and our marketing tools, and I think what you're seeing now is the, the, the fruits of that effort is starting to come through. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Um, if there's nobody, I'd come to Henderson. <coughs> I, I just wanted to, um, to add that um, I'd like to thank the efforts that you folks have made recently, particularly um, with some of the efforts in Turingi and Tongariro region down the bottom of the lake. I came to you with a paper in December and you responded to a number of the things that were in that and um, I know that the operators down there, a number of them have expressed to me that their satisfaction with the, the game being raised. So, yeah, good, good, good work and well done. A little bit of confusion for me, Scott. Um, I just really need a bit of a yes, no answer. Central Park, New Zealand, is that still exist or doesn't it? It does exist. Are we still a funding body? We are, uh, I th but to be honest with you, it won't be the, the major funding vehicle or the joint venture vehicle for us going forward into Australia. Uh, the other thing that we're currently working on, and it's a good point you've raised actually, is there's uh, a thing called the Upper North Island Strategic Alliance, and that's a grouping of all the major uh, regions from pretty much Taupo up. We've looked at a... Uh, well, we've basically been meeting over the last three or four months. It's something that uh, Rob Williams uh, initiated through through my through DGLT. Uh, we're now going to be putting a major joint venture into Australia this spring and also uh, following autumn, and that's going to be focused on up, up, upper North Island road trips. So uh, this is this type of joint venture was previously run in the South Island uh, as part of the earthquake recovery. And so what we're looking at now is a bigger joint venture. That will include Auckland and also Northland. Now, the idea is to promote a figure of eight touring uh, for independent travellers. And I think, from my point of view, this is a much stronger campaign proposition. And the reason is that before, when we were relying on Rotorua Airport, we we're only getting effectively 9,000 visitors a year through those two flights. And we definitely want to grow that, and we're not forgetting about it. But if you look at the number of Australians coming through Auckland, it's, it's obviously significantly higher it's, and uh, so it's very, it makes a lot more sense for us to push our, our itinerary uh, packages through that, that bigger uh, gateway. Is Thanks, Dad. I just wanted to know if Central Park New Zealand was still a living thing and 
whether we were a funding body, and the answer is yes and yes. Any other further questions from anybody? Well, being none, thank you very much, Scott, and uh, Mr. Winter. Or Paul, which is uh, cool. <laughs> the way to go. Okay, um, my task is after you've got the view of the last six months, what have we learned from that last six months and what does it mean for where we go forward, um, particularly in terms of our statement of intent. And uh, those who've read it through and tried to absorb it will have noticed that there's elements that uh, where we're repeating what's been done in the past and there's changes in emphasis as well. So hopefully as I go through this, you'll get a feel for why we believe we uh, sometimes we ought to stick to what we've been doing and other times we ought to sort of move on and, and learn. Um, I want to sort of break it into three bits. I want to talk a little bit about us uh, first as an organisation because it's only our second full year, this one coming up 2012-2013, operating as a council controlled uh, uh, organisation. And uh, more importantly, it's actually... Uh, uh, quite an interesting challenge for those who've been involved in this in the past to move from an environment like within council to an environment outside of council and to get a sort of a private sector uh, 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 focus into some of what we do. And that sort of cultural shift and cultural change uh, doesn't, doesn't happen in five minutes. It takes a little while to get some of those things to, to occur. And so we've openly acknowledged in the SOI that we're only on the, on the journey and uh, so on, and uh, I'll, I'll come back to some of that. And the actual statement of intent itself and what we're trying to do with that and clearly looking beyond the statement of intent because this is the year of a long-term plan um, and where do we see things trending and uh, how does that fit within it? Uh, you know, uh, looking out, as we all know, into the future is uh, troublesome enough. Uh, <laughs> Looking out uh, a couple of years is a little bit easier, but you're still, you're still with a lot of major investments, you've got to have a 10 year horizon. So you've got to make some assumptions about that. Um, and so we're trying to do that. So it was November 2010 that we became a, um, a CCO. Um, probably the most important thing that we've tried to establish is, uh, on the one hand, we had an organisation that needed to keep functioning. We had an industry that needed to keep business uh, coming in the door. Um, and anybody involved in change management knows that it's actually quite hard to keep the existing stuff ticking over and, and producing some results and yet also introduce change. So during our first year, uh, we probably went less on, on, the, on the change. Um, there were some areas where there was uh, a reasonable amount of change, but. But as we go forward, we would like to see a more future-oriented emphasis and less on the day-to-day. -day. Um, and obviously, it's much easier to do that if the business environment is starting to pick up um, and we're starting to get some results, which is why Scott sort of showed you the, the, the sort of the trend that's there. Um, so we do believe we've made uh, some progress. We want to be highly accountable to you guys and to the, to the industry, who are the major players. Um, we uh, we um, don't don't duck that at all. There, there clearly have been some uh, you know some some challenges uh, in the process, um, and I'm sure as we look forward, there'll be some even greater challenges that are, are coming up. Um, probably the most important thing from our perspective is to understand where Taupo itself and all of the communities around this great lake sit in the minds of the target markets because it's not the same for, for each person. Um, and those of you who've travelled quite extensively overseas will know you have the same perceptions of other countries. Some areas you know very well, other areas you've got a vague idea um, and, and where things sit. And of course we all know that um, unless somebody has got some particular reason for loving this area, uh, the further away the target market, the, the less they'll know about us uh, and, and the challenges that produces. So we see uh, that we're going to have to live within a pyramid of brands. And, and the language here, parent and sub-regional brands, I guess we've just talked about uh, the southern end of the lake and, and uh, Turangi Tongariro. Uh, that's clearly got uh, some images of its own, it's got some product of its own, but it's still part of us. 
Um, and then probably more important, um, and, and that's back to the, the, the changes in the explore the central North Island, we are part of a much bigger region ourselves. And um, uh, as we, one of the challenges that an area like uh, Taupo has got is that in the minds of the major international operators sitting in their minds, if they know New Zealand at all, and I've uh, been uh, a marketer offshore and had to sell New Zealand, and I can tell you a lot of people don't know much about New Zealand if they know that we exist. Um, if they have heard of places, it's usually, it can be summarised as about three or four, Auckland, Rotorua, Queenstown, um, you know, maybe uh, Christchurch. So therefore anybody not in that core bit, it's actually quite hard to get yourself out there and noticed. Um, the other part that's related to that, which is why it's important for us to understand the challenges, um, because we see this with, with what's happening in Auckland, is anything that's got some uh, competitive strength and is strong continues to reinforce itself and grow. And so once something's successful, everybody goes like to the honeypot. And, and so that, that inevitably keeps it going. We want this area to become a honeypot, and to get that to happen, we've really uh, you know, got to make sure that the existing operators are successful and that others want to come here, shift their business here, to be part of, of, of what happens. And that doesn't take five minutes to, to get to happen. As we all know, it's, it's quite a challenge. So where does this leave us in terms of our marketing ac activity? I think nobody will be surprised that we've got the major focus still on the domestic market. Um, it's, it's, the, uh, uh, it's been demonstrated time and time again to be the most responsive. Uh, those campaigns that were illustrated, the results that have been achieved, that was all targeted at the domestic. As Scott said, that's not to ignore the international market at all. We don't want to do that, but we've got to be realistic with our budget, what we can do in those marketplaces. <coughs> What we do see happening a lot more as we go forward, uh, and this is the wonderful thing about electronic media, is much more niche marketing. Because all of our operators in this region can market themselves. Okay, there's no problem with that. But when they learn to work cooperatively together as a cluster, the marketing gets much, much stronger. So uh, it's not that you're wanting to lose the distinctiveness of each of the operators, but what you're wanting to do is say, what is it that we share in common that is worth promoting cooperatively so we all benefit? And the one that obviously this region's known for is it's trout fishing. Okay, each of the, the guys that are, are, are out there as, as uh, guides or, or with um, uh, the businesses in that area will promote themselves. But if we have a reputation as a total region for that, then that's actually much easier to market than trying to market individual businesses. You could multiply that um, uh, in each of the areas. And, and can I say, just using to, to move away from what you're known, the Erupt Festival and the focus on the arts that's about to take place. If somebody was looking at um, the media results that are there, there is a, a fantastic article by uh, a visitor to the region who wanted just to relax, didn't want to be into the high buzz activities. When you read that article, this region is great for people who don't want the buzz, but just want to relax. Um, and so with niche activities and with the benefit of uh, uh, being able to target your marketing out to the particular interested people, you can get the benefits uh, of, of both occurring if you get strong clusters. And so if we get a stronger and stronger arts cluster here in, in this region, that will, that will be good for the diversity of the product that we, that we have on offer. So all of that, on the rest of that, I will uh, not touch on because knowing the customer just really flows out of what I've said. But probably the, the thing I must emphasise is we will keep that online development going. Um, can I just use this graph to then illustrate why this is the most important thing that we're going to be focusing on doing um, to go forward? Because 
if we're trying to encourage the industry to invest in marketing themselves, they've got to be sure that there's good results. And uh, if the referrals that we give them are of the order of uh, the numbers that are down here, the, the lower level, the, you know, the 6,000s, or if they lift like double to about 12, that improves the confidence of everybody in investing in their, in their own uh, uh, products and marketing. We know, looking forward, you've got an austerity budget in front of you. We know that there isn't going to be lots of growing money available for this community to market its tourism. So where is the money going to come from if we're going to compete and succeed? It's going to have to come from the operators. That is a big, big challenge. I, I don't, we, we don't underestimate that challenge at all. Uh, but that's the reality that, that we're facing. Um, and we know that they've got to succeed. Back to the problem of big honey pots and how attractive they are. Uh, unless we can get new, substantial new businesses here, there won't be substantial new budgets to help uh, to promote the region. And that's the challenge. Um, and that's not for us alone. So we've set, the th we've kept the three overarching objectives that were in last year's one. Obviously, the tourism economy has got to get stronger. We've been through all the wire of that. And in order for that to be the case, we've got to engage uh, more with our stakeholders and we've got to get a more effective um, eyesight network. And I'll come back to that in a moment. So what are the hard goals we've set for ourselves? Um, there they are in terms of the stronger economy. Now, in some senses, what we've tried to be here is realistic about what we will do. There's a challenge with the, world, with the Rugby World Cup. It was the net boost to us last year was good. What happens when those numbers reverse out of the data? And, and you, you uh, step back by, let's say it's only a net 4,000. We were up 8,000 during that Rugby Cup. The following month we were down four. Let's, let's say it's a net four. Well, we've got to win that back. Plus we've got to continue to, 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 to grow. So that's the, 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 um, you know, the key thing in there. The unique visitors coming to the site, we've kept at the moment uh, the 25,000. To step up again to say 30,000, we would need to do something significantly different on the site. We're not clear yet as to what that might be, but if we believe that we could get there and that it would produce good, good business to the uh, industry, we would at that point uh, step up. Uh, the other ones um, I, I won't comment on, except um, I will comment on the willingness to recommend the region. No matter how good a job DGLT do, in the end it's the satisfaction of the people who come and spend their time in this region and their experiences here that's going to drive the results going forward. We, we will play our part in getting people here, but let's say we did a great job and over-promised, got lots more here, but then we as a community under-delivered to them. That's very short term and that's not the way to succeed. You've got to, what you've got to do is meet and exceed the, uh, uh, the expectations of the people who visit. So that's why we, we see that as key for us to be working with the businesses in the region because um, unless those businesses are confident in themselves, confident in us is, is whatever they are, whether it's a cluster, uh, in a community, whether it's a special interest cluster, whether it's all of us as Taupo. Unless people are confident that in that aspect of it, um, uh, we won't continue to grow. We are stepping up, as you can see, what we want to get by way of contributions from the industry. Whether we'll get that in straightened times, we don't know. It's going to be a challenge, but that's our goal, uh, to achieve that. And. Um, we want our stakeholders to be satisfied in us. We've got some way to go in that, uh, but um, uh, certainly getting up to sort of 8 